Hello and welcome to my first repair vlog. Hopefully you'll find some interesting clues here. I'm not a Tim Boyd, I'm not uh, an expert, I'm just an amateur that's getting back into the hobby. And I want to let you know that there's absolutely no warranty, no guarantee, no Mr. T. No, we're just amateurs here trying to have some fun, maybe pass on a few tips. Uh, hopefully you enjoy the vlog. Thanks. In this episode we're going to be repairing the windshield on this 64 Plymouth Promo. We've got some damage up in here from scratches and some damage over here. Possible glue damage along the bottom. We don't know. We haven't taken it apart yet. And uh, we have damage on the passenger side pillar. We have a piece of the pillar that's missing here. And it looks like a bubble where someone tried to glue it back together. Which happens a lot. And uh, it just didn't work. So we got to work up a replacement for this also. First step is disassembly. Fortunately, for in the 64 model year, the bottom has these slotted screws, which easily come apart. And I actually have still the screwdriver, the same one I bought in 1962, that fits these models perfectly. And I haven't found one since that actually works as well. So After careful disassembly, you come across the heat pressed parts in the interior. What I usually do with these is I just cut away the excess plastic, trying to do as little damage as possible so I can put it back as close to factory. Of course, it's only original once, but I'd rather have it repaired. And then what I will do, like with this one, is I will just slowly work the tabs loose. Sometimes you have to go in and recut them a few times. And just easily and slowly work the tabs out. Another thing with the convertibles is you have a little place up in here where they melted the boot to the interior tub. So those will have to be ground away. Through the boot, I ended up just taking my trusty X-Acto knife that everybody has, scraping away the excess melted plastic and then using the point to actually push the remainder of the pin out which lifted the boot just a little bit and then I'm going to get my fingernails because I don't want to use any really tools in this area and you can see now the boot can lift off the body cleanly now with the interior tub out, we can go ahead and just carefully remove the glass. I like to support the body because remember this frame has hardly anything keeping it intact and why make more damage. And we just carefully pop this up around the pins and get it out of here. Okay, we need the bigger screwdriver. So there we go. Ta-da! Now we can assess the damage and work on it much better. So we can see here that we do have, and you can see the scrapes on the front and the scrapes on the side and the glue marks. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a real quick trip out to the kitchen, wash this in some clean soapy dishwater to remove anything I can that way and then we'll begin restoration on this piece of glass as we can see the side of the glass has some glue left on it from a bad repair so uh, we're first thing we're gonna do is get rid of that glue so we're gonna have to sand that down and we're probably gonna start with around 600 we're gonna do with some wet sanding and work the grit up until we eventually get it to where it's ready to be polished a little piece of sandpaper wet type get a little wet get my window a little wet and try and get in front of the camera something you don't normally think about and go to work when you're doing this you want to make sure you don't get overzealous just do the minimal amount you need to remove what you gotta remove. I 
like I said, I'm not used to having to do it in front of the camera. So, you can see we have a little bit of a, a deal. Okay. Alright, so, so far now we're up to around 2,000 and it's actually starting to look sort of clear again. The glue is basically gone. Uh, I did have to do a little bit on the inside too. But, it's getting there. If you had more scratches and to deal with across the top, these came off real easy. So we didn't have to actually sand them. This is just some debris that will come off later. And the rest of it is pretty good. The key, other key is to do the area, not just the corner, because you get a warped, weird-looking finish. You need it to all be smooth because you're looking through this. So, as you can see, it's still sort of dull, but we're getting there. Well, we've gotten it smooth. There's still a little bit. That one glue bump left, but I'm afraid I'll remove too much material. Don't want to do that. So we've gone all the way up to wet sanding to 12,000. So now it's time to pretty it up. So now it's time to get out the Meguiar's and do some polishing. Try and make her look pretty. So I've had really, really good luck with the Meguiar's products. I use them on my one-to-one -one cars all the time. So here we go. So now we'll just take it and buff her out with the Meguiar's. Concentrating, of course, a lot on the bad the area we had to work on. So we'll get her clean. Get her all nice and clean. And you can see. Be careful of this. This plastic is old and it is brittle, and especially the Johan stuff. It was brittle in '64. <clears throat> there we go. You can see we got the shine back. She's ready to go back in. Got rid of the glue marks. That one little round one just won't quite go away. And I just didn't want to sand the whole thing all the way down. So that one we're going to call up with it. But otherwise, we're about ready to put this back together. Except we have that broken window pillar, which is an extremely common problem. So we're going to work on that next. Took a little time at this point to throw some Meguiar's on the body, since it's a color molded body. Uh, being careful to avoid the area of repair, so <clears throat> only polish on there, stop the glue. So, just threw a little Meguiar's on there, we had some on the rag, always makes her look better. Alright, next move involves trying to work on that window pillar. So we're going to go ahead and hit the parts box over here, which is better known as parts box for Chrysler products, which is also better known as... I don't know if I'll ever need it, but I'll put it in there because someday you never know. And in the parts box has yielded us a 64 Dodge. This is the one that doesn't have the trim on the side. So I don't mind using it. If it was an original mint body, obviously I wouldn't tear it up. But it's the reproduced one. And it was left over. And I have spare glass should I need it. So, but I don't. So we're going to start with this, and of course, it's the same color, yes. It's like, why do I save all this stuff? I don't know. Do I need a front bumper for a 61 Chrysler? Probably not, but I got one. So, using the scriber, I very carefully removed the pillar from the car at the top and the bottom. I dug out at the bottom leaving a little extra material so I didn't actually cut it here. I dug down into the channel removed it as an entire unit. 
from the parts car. And what this enabled me to do was to put it back into the Plymouth and on the bottom left a little extra room to glue it into the channel to give it a little extra security. I glued the top first, verified that the window would fit nice and then uh, once that set up overnight I glued the bottom. Dug out a little bit more than I should have there but that's the only mistake. So not bad I saved an old promo using a junk body that was already damaged so not a big loss here. So now it's time to put it back together. And here it is all finished. Put back together with the piece glued in. It doesn't look too bad. It's not perfect, but considering it was uh, an amateur job, I'm not too disappointed. Came out pretty well, and thankfully the parts box had what we needed. Now I have to go off in search of a hood ornament. So thank you for the first edition. Okay, in the next video I plan on doing, we're going to cover a little more rascal problems like these, where you have a tire burn or some kind of an issue coming into the glass, and sanding it out might not really work. Also, there may be little hairline cracks in there, but we'll cover that in the next one. So, see you till then. Bye.